F5 tornadoes are incredibly rare. In the 72 years since 1950, only 62 tornadoes have been officially rated F5 or EF5 worldwide, an average of less than one per year. In fact, the world is currently in its longest F5 drought ever recorded. As of April 28, 2022, it has been 8 years, 11 months, and 6 days since the last, the infamous 2013 monster of Moore, Oklahoma. Of the 62 official F5 tornadoes since 1950, only three have occurred outside the United States. The first two, one in France in 1967 and one in Russia in 1984, have very little remaining evidence associated with them. The last, occurring in rural Canada on June 22, 2007, has quite the opposite and provides an interesting case study showing just how unusual some powerful tornadoes can be. June 22, 2007 was an uncomfortable day in the small farming town of Eli, Manitoba, Canada. The community's barely more than 500 residents likely spent the day avoiding the sun as it was unusually warm with highs around 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. More importantly, it was almost unbearably humid. With relative humidity climbing as high as 75%, heat index values would have been well above 38 degrees Celsius, or 100 Fahrenheit. Storms began to form just after 5 p.m. By 5.40, two strong supercell thunderstorms sat above the area, with a third forming at about 6.20. The middle storm of the three was positioned northwest of Eli and tracked southeast towards the town for a little over an hour. It moved slowly, around 5 meters per second or 11 miles per hour. Notably, there was almost no rain associated with the cell, and storm chaser Justin Hobson recalls that birds were chirping and the overall mood was actually quite peaceful. Around 6.10, a funnel began to fall out of the sky. Like thousands of nameless tornadoes before it, the EY F5 began as a skinny, unimpressive rope, which meandered towards the town at F0 to F1 intensity. After slightly changing direction, it moved south across the Trans-Canada Highway at about 6.25 p.m., where it overturned a semi-trailer. At this point, it was observed to be only about as wide as the two lanes of the highway, around 13 meters. After changing direction again, the tornado encountered its first structure, a grain mill just south of the highway. It crossed over the mill at around 6.45, but as if not satisfied with its work, it looped back around and struck the mill again, strengthening all the way. By its second pass, the tornado was producing F1 to F2 level damage and had grown to a width of around 50 meters. Multiple semi-trucks were overturned or damaged, and building walls buckled inward, but fortunately, no one was hurt. The tornado continued south. At this point, there was absolutely nothing remarkable about it, 
and it seemed destined to dissolve quietly over the plains. However, again acting as if it had an appetite for destruction, the tornado turned east and put itself on a direct course towards the south edge of the town. It also continued to grow and was now at its widest point with a diameter of around 140 meters. As it approached Eli, the tornado was still only producing F0 to F1 level damage. Pictures and videos from the day portray a very unintimidating storm, with witnesses chatting, posing, and casually watching on. It passed just south of Eli Road, barely missing the houses, at 6.59 p.m. And here is where it would finally make its name. Within a minute, the tornado shrunk dramatically as it entered the final phase of its life. Like a spinning ice skater pulling their limbs close to their body, the storm began to rotate faster and faster, and seemingly in the blink of an eye became a destructive force to behold. As it transformed, it looped back over the four houses at the end of Eli Street striking the first at the absolute height of its power. Though people were home at the time, miraculously no one was hurt. A dozen homes were damaged, of those four were destroyed. The Coppolas rode out the twister under a mattress. When it was all over, only the foundation was left. Not sure how long it took. It didn't seem that long, but next thing you know, everything was gone. And I don't remember my husband pulling the mattress over top of us, but um... When he, he said, I think the house is gone, honey, and I go, no way. I looked up and I could see the sky and all the debris. We won our million dollars. If people want to win a million dollars, I think our luck was surviving an F5 tornado. When the survey team arrived at Eli, they found damage consistent with a strong F4 tornado, though one of the house sites exhibited clear evidence of F5 damage. However, because of the slow movement of the storm, the team was suspicious that the damage might have been caused by a weaker tornado stalling over the houses for an extended period of time, and therefore gave an official rating of F4. This would be upgraded to F5 based on a terrifying video which surfaced in the following days. Oh, is that a roof? Ha, boom! Is that a building? Yes, so. Oh, it's probably a house. But it could work as well. Oh! I had the RC. It's not the mill, it's enough. It's not the mill, it's the town. You wanna come? Oh. Is that a roof? Ha, boom! Is that building? Also, oh. it's probably a house. The Eli F5 was unusual in many different ways. First, its path was incredibly unpredictable. The tornado looped back on itself three times and changed direction five times. At multiple points, it seemed to steer itself towards buildings as if guided by some unseen intelligence. Second, it changed intensity extremely rapidly. Within the few minutes before 7 p.m., the storm went from producing F1 or F2 level damage to full-on F5 destruction. Last, it was an organized, skinny, quiet storm, which looked nothing like what one would expect from an F5 tornado. Seen next to the chaotic monsters of Joplin, El Reno, or more, the tornado appears absolutely laughable. But as the evidence shows, the wind in that tiny funnel was just as violent as any of these.
At the end of the day, the EY F5 tornado was a very strange storm, which by chance cemented itself in the history books. What could have been another forgotten twister among the thousands which crisscrossed the plains every year ended up becoming almost an object of national pride, the most powerful tornado ever recorded across an entire country, and the only one of its kind.